Fans Radio, and you're listening to Across the Pond MMA, the radio show where I am in London, well, sorry, Newcastle, England. Matt is in Indiana somewhere, and Erica is in unknown whereabouts because she's actually secretly Batman. Because of this, I am indeed te- Batman. Secretly Batman. <laughs> because of this, technical difficulties sometimes happen. Uh, that's on my case because apparently, well, not even apparently, internet in England is fucking terrible. Uh, Matt had some natural disasters whilst there was no episode uh, this week. We did try. Trust me. Um, and Eric is just cushy as usual. Aren't you, darling? How are you? How, how is everything going on? Everything is wonderful, my friend. Everything is uh, really good. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Matt, how are you, sir? Doing fantastic, man. I just, I'm just i just crossing fingers that uh, everything goes good today. So am I. I mean, I don't. I don't think I've ever brought my laptop into the living room, and I don't think I've ever been this close to a router. So if it goes down, uh, I might just destroy this router with my bare fist. But however, you can tell that I'm I'm really jazzed for the episode because I'm talking properly, and it's going to be fun. And there's been a lot of fun at MMA fights recently, especially in the last two weeks. And we're going to break those down with each other today. And we're you know we're going to have Surfer Ken on the show as well. Matt, would you like to explain who Surfer Ken is? Because I reckon I'd do an absolutely terrible job of it. Uh, for sure. He's just one of the uh, many MMA vloggers on YouTube. But uh, mm-hmm. the guy's pretty damn accurate with his pr- predictions. I mean, I, I would say most guys, if you're in the 60 to 65% uh, prediction, correct, are being correct with your predictions, you're doing pretty good. And he's he's up there probably around 70, 75%. I mean, the guy's, uh, the guy's really, really accurate. So he knows his MMA. Talking of uh, percentage, there was uh, there were 10 fights last week. Oh, sorry, last night. Uh, do you want to know how many of those I've got right? How many? I got seventy percent of them right. Can you guess the three fights that fucked me over in my accumulator? Excuse my language. Uh, Jordan Meehan. Yes. Yeah, that that kind of uh, everybody over. I'm going to say Gilbert Melendez. Wrong. Lorenz Larkin. Lorenz Loren- Larkin. Okay. Lorenz Larkin and Tim Means. Well, those are all fights that uh, I, I. Well, I got one of those, two, one of the three right there. I, I missed the me and and the uh, Tim Means fight as well. But I did pick Fran- Francis Carmont to get us a nice, boring UD. Huh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I felt especially heartbroken over the Lorenz Larkin one. The Tim Means one, a bit like Carlos Condit versus George Saint Pierre for me, depending on how you you look at it. And Jordan Mean was just. Me jumping on the bandwagon, like sucking up the hype. <laughs> you know? well, wh- well, what did you think of the tough finale since we didn't have a show last week? Yes, we will talk about the tough finale now. Um, <laughs> talking of bandwagons, great segue, segue Matt. Uh, the Uriah <laughs> Hall bandwagon, uh, well and truly derailed or just at a stop? Uh, I think it's just at a stop. I think that he needs, I think he needs genuinely a sports sci fi. Uh, Sorry, a sports psychiatrist, because you could see from the Ultimate Fighter that he is physically gifted. Uh, he's explosive, wink, wink, Matt. Um, <laughs> he's very, he's very technical as well, the striking. Um, but mentally, he's he's like me or you. Like you're, for for a, for a normal fighter, you need you, you, they have killer instincts. I don't think he has a killer instinct. I mean, how many other fighters do you know or have you seen? cry when they've knocked their opponent out and just apologized he need he uh, that's you know what i can't i'm not gonna that's not me making fun of him or i know but it is still funny uh, i just want to say i just want to say that's not me making fun of him that's me saying you're a, a very nice person and i can respect you for 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 doing that but and that's me being an asshole because i laugh at people that cry so. exactly um You'd cry if I kicked you in the nuts, son. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I probably but, uh, would. Yeah, exactly. I know, but, I'm uh, kind of curious. Did, did you guys – okay, for me, Uriah Hall feels mm-hmm. like uh, a guy that just – I mean, I, I don't know that he's ever going to reach where everybody thinks he's going because I think his fighter IQ is just really, really bad. And, I mean, you can change that, but I just kind of get a little bit of a no, Melvin Gillard no, fighter no. IQ thing going on in there, and you think mm-hmm. it's just mental. No, no, I don't think it's fighter IQ because if it was fighter IQ, you wouldn't have seen 
uh, a dude throw a spinning hook kick or knock Bubba McDaniels out in well, that, that, yeah, but, but that's, that, that, that's that's a fight yeah, that's yeah. fire IQ because that's a killer instinct there. But I think you know when you're talking when he was I think the perfect example of what you, you need to do with your eye hall or you need from your eye hall is you need someone like a Chell Sun and that's incredibly weird for me to say, but you need someone like a Chell Sun and in his ear telling him the things he needs to hear for him to go out and perform. You need... Do you, have you ever seen Badahari fight? Absolutely. You know when he's uh, he's walking to the ring and he's got Mike from Mike's gym behind him screaming at him, shouting at him? I'm, I'm assuming that Mike's saying some pretty dastardly stuff to get him, to get Badahari psyched up and motivated to go out there and be the killer that he is. I think Uriah Hall needs something like that instead of just, you know, going off his explosiveness and his technical ability and his striking skills. Because, you know, there were times in that fight where he crushed Gastelum. But if you add it up over, to, you know, 15 minutes, that's probably about 45 seconds of a 15-minute fight where he was just crushing him, dude. And the rest of the fight, Gastelum was just imposing his will, taking him down, beating him up. Uh, that German suplex would have finished most dudes. Got shades of Chris Benoit in that fight. Yeah, I think that. I mean, I think you're taking a little bit away from Kelvin, though, man. He came in oh, no, and was no, no. super aggressive, which I think also messed with Hall. I yeah. mean, Kelvin. I mean, Kelvin by far and away was the most aggressive guy that Hall faced. I mean, watching what what we've seen on Tough, anyways. And I think that that had a little bit to do with it. I'm still saying that Hall's fighter IQ is bad because when he. I mean, maybe you say killer instinct. I say fighter IQ. I mean, he wasn't aggressive when he needed to be aggressive. He sit, would sit and, lay, and wait and, and t- for something to happen, and and let Kevin get off. Kelvin get off first. So I, I I don't know. We'll see here what happens in the next uh, you know six months with him uh, fighting. Uh, he like cause he I mean it looks like he is he is going to be uh, with Chael training is and he that where he's uh, he's at now. Yeah, uh, I think he'll still. I think he'll definitely stay with Tiger Shawman. I also know that he's being enlisted by Chris Weidman to help him for the fight with Anderson Silva, which I think is a very, very good move on the part of Chris Weidman. I mean, I'm not saying Uriah Hall is like Anderson Silva or even on the same level, but if you're going to get someone who's kind of elusive and very good with striking, very like, dynamic, so that's very dynamic. You might as well get someone like Uriah Hall, who's in the same state as you. And you don't have to buy tickets to get him there, and he can go to his own home and all that sort of stuff. You need to pay him to spar with you. Well, I think I think Hall's a very likable guy, and so I think he's going to get a lot of help from a lot of people. And so we'll see uh, we'll see what he what he shows us here in the next in the coming months because I'm going to be very interested to see where this kid's career goes because I mean he does have the skill and the talent to 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 fight with the best of them. Have you seen Have you seen the little uh, conversation? For, did you see the little conversation thrown out after last night regarding Uriah Hall and a certain other fighter potentially fighting now? No, I didn't. Lorenz Larkin versus Uriah Hall. Does that not turn you on just a little bit? It. I don't know because Larkin's going to be. He's going to come right at Hall, and so. You know, look. I love I love Uriah Hall, but. I want to see a fight, and I want to see some fly, high flying shenanigans as well. That is like the definite. This is no Kimbo Slice versus Houston Alexander. These two are gonna go, and I believe it as well. So, well, I, if, if if we saw the best Uriah Hall, then yeah, I'd love to see that fight. But if we see the Uriah Hall that just at times doesn't look like he wants to be inside the cage, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I don't want to see that fight yet for Uriah. I don't. I'd like to see him fight a couple guys. Uh, down a little bit further down the food chain because I think Lorenz Larkin, even though he lost to Francis Cormier, I think his striking is upper up uh, is uh, is in the upper echelons of the middleweight division. Larkin's got some pretty sick striking. Cool, cool, cool. Well, well let's talk about uh, Kevin uh, Gastelum a little bit more. I mean, he's moving down to 170 pounds after this fight. I can't really blame him. He was a bit tubby upstairs uh, for 185 pounds, but. Could he be a better version of Court McGee and actually do something in the world? <laughs> Maybe that's Is a it, good match for him because doesn't isn't Court McGee looking for a match right now? So we, we could get. We could get Kelvin versus Court. I, I don't know, man. I, I think that this kid is a—he's going to be a gritty fighter. He's a wrestler. He's obviously fearless. So uh, I'm sure he'll be—he'll uh, give us some entertaining fights. The welterweight division. I don't see him, you know, breaching the top ten in the welterweight division right right now. Okay. No, neither do I. Uh, there's still a lot of work for him to be done on Mr. Gastelum, but he's young enough 
at 21 years old. She barely turned 21 years old. Uh, he's young enough at 21 years old to really, you know, and he's got a lot of money as well now after winning the old fight. He's got enough money to, to really focus on his trade and really get better at the striking elements, the uh, the jiu-jitsu elements, and just grow as a fighter. He's, he's at that perfect age. Um, Uriah Fiber, Uriah Fiber, <laughs> Uriah Faber <laughs> versus Scott Jorgensen. Uh, great fight. Great, great, great fight between those two. Uriah Faber, just at 33 years old, and my 33 isn't, old but in terms of MMA it kind of is dude keeps on evolving just really, just, he doesn't stop getting better there's always something new about his game and he's always constantly getting better with his old game just taking people down beating them up and getting the choke in um, the striking's got better can, can we call team alpha male the anesthetist to uh, <laughs> the black zillions, black zillions. <laughs> yeah I think we can I think that's a fair <laughs> and, Nova, and, and Nova Unia is just the ultimate beast. Yeah, no, I think that's a fair assessment. Your eye favor, man, dude, is just a monster. I mean, if he's, uh, like you said last week, and I cut you off, or two weeks ago, Faber, if he's not fighting for the championship, the guy is just killing people. Mm. And so, uh, and he does. His striking game, especially if you watch, like I said, the last four, his last four fights, mm. you can just see his striking game just continually to continue to evolve and continue to get better. Um, so the only, the only negative I had for him in the favor or in the Jorgensen fight was that at times it seemed like he was thinking a little bit too much about a striking uh, instead of uh, just letting it flow. Mm. But I mean, that's, a, uh, that's just nitpicking. I mean, the guy looked phenomenal against Scott Jorgensen, who's a, a fantastic band and weight in his own right. Um, I think that, you know, favor is, is right back there. He didn't get another title shot. I mean, he's, he's right there. And you know what? Scott didn't look terrible either. Scott no, had no, not at all. Moment, so it was, a, it was a definitely a fun, fun fight. Um, I'm as impressed as I am with Uriah Faber, as impressed as I am with Joseph Benavides, Chad Mendes, TJ Dillashaw, all those guys, Team Alpha Male. I've got to be slightly more impressed with Uriah Faber, not in the sense of just fighting, but in the sense of his mind for hiring Dwayne Ludwig, because I'm pretty sure there weren't many out there shouting for him as the coach of the year, and I'm pretty sure Black Zillions are probably trying to think up an offer to, to get this guy as their head coach, because what a fantastic job Dwayne Ludwig has done with getting Team Alpha Male. Just, I mean, they were already a good team, but as a head coach, he's really like quickly whipped them into something pretty incredible. Undefeated so far in the year. Um, I don't see them losing unless it's a title fight. And that's with Uriah Faber at Bantamweight or TJ Dillashaw at Bantamweight and Chad Mendes at Featherweight. I don't think either of any of them are going to get title shots this year. But, damn, it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting to see what Dwayne Ludwig's done there. And he's definitely on my short list for the World MMA Awards next year. Um, for coach of the year, I mean, he's done a fantastic, fantastic job. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I think you just pretty much nailed it with that. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, and Kat Zingano versus Misha Tate. Because let's be honest, guys, we're not going to talk about Bubba McDaniel. <laughs> Uh, shout, really fight, shout anyway. out to Luke! Shout out to my boy Luke Barnett winning on the on the Ultimate Fighter as well. A bloody fight! That's how Luke usually wins his fights, unless he, he either beats the crap out of them or he has a fight where both of them bleed. So shout out to Luke! Got love to him. That's that's actually a, a friend of mine. But uh, Misha Tate versus Kat Zingano. The ladies <laughs> showing everyone up. God damn, it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? And they went in. Yeah, the only thing that I was kind of bummed about was that the UFC really didn't uh, uh, have a whole lot of promos running for that particular fight. I mean, they went nuts about uh, Rousey, but uh, this fight didn't get very much love, so I thought that was kind of lame uh, as far as Fox and the UFC is concerned. Um, but as far as the fight goes, fantastic. I was really blown away by how uh, much Misha Tate was able to control Kat Zingano, and I think that maybe part of the the you know – UFC jitters and all that stuff maybe played into it a little bit because Cat was pretty devastating, obviously, in the later, later part of that fight. But um, uh, props to Misha Tate. She did, she did a far better job than what I thought she was going to do. But uh, I can't wait to see Cat Zingano versus uh, Ronda Rousey. I think it's going to be an interesting fight. Indeed. And, like, I feel – I don't know why. Well, I do know why because the girls 
the ladies, you you always bring it. But um, I feel more really like interested in seeing the ladies fight, the women fight, uh, than the guys right now. I mean, there's some brilliant fights with the dudes, but I'm really interested to see Simon McMahon versus Sheila Gaff. Uh, I'm very interested to see Alexis Davis versus Rosie Sexton. Um, and I'm really, really interested to see the ultimate fighter um, with the ladies and the guys, and because the the wealth of talent at the at the ultimate fighter for uh, the ultimate fighter tryouts was fantastic. I mean, Tara La Rosa, Tara La Rosa should be on the blood. Should be signed to the UFC already. Twenty one and three. She's beaten pretty much yeah, everybody. Um, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm hoping that this stays for a long time. And you know, if they add more um, weight classes, then you get to see the likes of. Um, oh god, I'm completely forgetting her name, and it's a, a damn shame. Uh, 115 pound, probably the greatest female fighter ever. She's Japanese. Can anyone throw <laughs> that name to me, please? I was actually spacing uh, out right there, so no. Uh, Megumi something. Megumi, Megumi Fuji. Thank you yes. very much. Yeah, there you go. Megumi Fuji. If you if you can get a 115 pound weight class, and there's some absolute killers at 115 pounds for the ladies uh, divisions. Uh, Megumi Fuji would be a great and fantastic and very good business move by the UFC to sign, and she wants to sign the UFC as well. So uh, I'm very looking forward. I'm looking forward to that quite a bit. Um, uh, anything else? Are we going to bring in Ken, Surfer Ken soon? I think we. I think we're ready. Yeah. So Eric, you want to call in Surfer Ken and see what he, his thoughts were on last night's fights and uh, UFC 159. Indeed, indeed, indeed. All right. Oh. Hold on. Let's call him. It, this is the best part of the podcast. You get to hear phone ring. Yeah. Uh, you know, an audio interface for a phone is like $300. And I'm like, mm. Mm, no. We can, hear, we can hear a ringtone. No. Uh, the worst part, though, is when people don't answer. Knock on wood. Jinxing. I am of the school thinking you should leave him a message, like a live on air message. A live on air <laughs> message. That's, hello, 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 guys. Hey, all right, Ken, you answered. Yes, I did. <laughs> how's it going, fellas? How you <laughs> Not doing, too sir? bad. Again, it's good to it's good to speak to you, sir. It's good to speak to you. Yeah. Uh, welcome to Across the Pond. And my name, Matt, is rude and won't do that. So I would <laughs> <laughs> welcome to you, welcome you. My name is Andre yeah, Jacobs. Do nice to speak to you. Uh, Matt is here as well. Uh, let's talk some. Let's talk some UFC on Fox Seven. We've been waiting for you, homie. So let, let's okay. get it done. I'm, in, I'm, I'm interested. What were your thoughts? Let's do it. Let's do what it. Yeah, it's an honor well, to where, be where, here. Where do you want to start? Honor. Where do you want to start? Do you want to start the main event? Do you want to start at the bottom? You guys decide. I'll I'll, I'll follow your lead. Um, it's up to you guys. I mean, Look, you know? dude, there were eight knockouts last night. So we might as well just start at the bottom and gradually get better. Um, <laughs> Yoel Romero versus Clifford Starks. Now, I made a joke on Twitter yesterday that uh, finally there were a lot of black play- black fighters on the card, and I hadn't heard the word explosive yet. Um, <laughs> I didn't. I actually missed the first fight. Apparently, they actually said the word explosive, but it was oh. a pretty explosive flying knee. What were your What were your thoughts on it, sir, Ken? I thought it was amazing. I picked I picked Yoel Romero to win it, and um, mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting. That kind of finish from him, considering he hasn't been in the octagon for almost a year and a half. Mm. Um, yeah, flying knee, you know, that's all good to me. I like that. Yeah. I like that kind of finish. For for the first fight on a Facebook prelim, definitely. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And at 185 pounds, he looks like an absolute beast. Matt, what were your thoughts on the former Olympian uh, going into the octagon, making his, his debut for the UFC? Um very well, impressive stuff. It's looked like it looks like he's really been working on the striking. He's incredibly, God, I'm going to say, it, athletic. <laughs> I, I agree, man. His, his strike, well, his striking has has really. Uh, I think he's been working on it uh, in, in the last year and a half. That 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 really showed through in that fight, and I was really blown away uh, by by the uh, flying knee. I mean, that's something in the prelims, uh, especially on Facebook. I mean, they can be. Uh, you know, somewhat uh, a little boring sometimes, and uh, I was not ready for that. I was watching, well, you know, they were they were stalking each other, and the next thing you know, Romero comes in with that flying knee, and it had me yelling and screaming, which 
that's typically again something I'm not doing during the Facebook fights. Um, so yeah, it was a fantastic finish and a great way to start off the UFC on Fox card. Now I'm going to ask you guys, guys this question uh, more than once today, but um, who would you match Yoel Romero up with now? Considering I'm assuming Clifford Starks is about to get a very feminine slip soon. Pink slip, if you weren't guessing what I meant. Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. I mean, we haven't seen a lot from last night of what he possibly can do. It was over so quick. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of people might think, let's stick him with Hector Lombard if you want to go athletic and the similar fighting styles after last night. But athletic honestly, and explosive. That's a tough call. He'd have to, you know, stay at that weight. I don't know. Um, it's a tough call. Matt. For, for me, I think maybe uh, I don't know. Staying with somebody that uh, was on that card last night, Lorenz Larkin. Maybe, maybe, maybe that could. <laughs> I always <laughs> like doing that. I like getting guys that are on the same cards that win, didn't come with too many injuries, because that means we can get those guys back in the cage fairly quickly. So Matt uh, just wants to see a lot of flying black people. <laughs> I love, I love flying black people. I know you do. I know you do. Uh, let's no, go no, into the no, next no. fight. Uh, <laughs> Anthony M. Jaquani versus Roger Bowling. I mean, um, I don't really know what to say besides from it. It looked really beautiful, but really painful. It all at the exact same time. Uh, how many times do you, do you ever see a dude, like, run? <laughs> get punched in the face, fall over, smash his head off a dude's shoulder and land on his knees and get knocked out. He got hit. Um, that was a pretty nasty, brutal knockout. Uh, Matt, were your, what were your thoughts on that? Were you, how impressed with you, Anthony Anjaquani? Well, Anjaquani, he's really... I, I like the guy, but it, it's... I, I don't know. I don't always know what to expect from Anjaquani because sometimes he gets in, he comes into the cage and I don't think we see the best Anjaquani. La- last night, though... I mean, fantastic game plan. Roger Bowling's game plan was absolutely horrible. I mean, his corner kept yelling at him to quit chasing him, and clearly he didn't listen. And so when you don't listen to your corners, sometimes you evidently you get knocked out and you fall into the guy in front of you. Well, he was winning. I lost you. Yeah, we we, we, we were having problems with Andre, so evidently Andre has uh, – has, uh, Gone a wall again with the uh, wonderful internet over there in the UK. That's that's not good. But um, <laughs> if you want me to follow up with your little yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Bowling fight. I agree with you on that on that note that he's uh, inconsistent. His win lo- loss record, his career is pretty much a win, a loss, a win, a loss. And last night was no exception. I believe he lost his last fight as well. And I agree. Um, Bowling's game plan was awful to keep walking in of those strikes, and he kept his hands down, and that's not a good thing to do when you're going against a striker like Anthony Njikawani, who's an insane Muay Thai fighter, so yeah, he got what was coming to him with that kind of game plan, that fighter IQ, yeah, and the headbutt after getting, uh, you know, clipped coming in, that was uh, icing on the cake to that game plan. <laughs> no, for sure, yeah. I, I actually, going into that fight, I thought Bowling was going to take it, but that was because I thought Bowling was going to come in and try to wrestle uh, Anthony and uh, I think that that's really the only spot where Anthony can have problems is if somebody tries to put him on his back. But uh, that was clearly I was uh, not on my on my A game on picking that fight. Oh, I yeah. Well, agree. you know it happens. I mean, it is MMA. But yeah, Anthony uh, he he has shown improved um, you know get, uh, ground game off his back because you know he has to get used to doing that. He's going to get dumped on his back a lot by wrestlers. But like you said, Bowling just did not come in with the right game plan. I don't know what he was thinking. Um, and I, I, I was curious to see how he's going to perform at 155 since he came down from a very muscular 170. So, um, yeah, so that question mark is still out there. We'll see. In, in his next fight, we'll see what happens. All right, Andre, you back with us? I am with you guys. Uh, <laughs> I got knocked off for like two seconds. Uh, apologies. TJ Dillashaw versus Hugo Viana. We were talking about the team alpha male effect, or excuse me, sorry, the Dwayne Ludwig effect. Uh, it was very much on the show with TJ Dillshaw versus Hugo Viana. Uh, Ken, I'm going to stop calling you Sir for Ken because it's very tiresome for my throat. Ken, <laughs> what were your I'll, thoughts I'll on that fight? I mean, actually, are you even a surfer? Yes, I am. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Just wanted to make sure because I, I call I, myself Amazing Dre, right but I'm not amazing. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as that fight, 
Uh, I, I was, you know, Hugo came in. He was very game. You know, he was he had a stand up game plan. Uh, but TJ, you know, it's it's you went you learn a lot more from your losses, I suppose, because he got. Um, He's coming into this uh, with four straight wins, if I'm not mistaken, and the last two fights, including that one, were KOs. So, um, you know, people wrote him off after the John Dodson fight. They're thinking, oh, yeah, he's just another, you know, ultimate fighter, um, you know, has been, but he came, he's come back strong. So, yeah, I think he's going to be a good contender this year, uh, make another title run. I, 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 very impressive, <laughs> very impressive KO, definitely. Indeed. Uh, Matt, what were your thoughts on the uh, TJ Dillashaw last night? He he, he made it a very uh, interesting night coming out to Bob Marley on 420. I mean, really? God, come on. That, that's be- that's a beautiful thing. What were your thoughts on TJ Dillashaw's performance? Well, we keep going back to Team Alpha Male, hi- the hiring of Dwayne Ludwig. I think it's just, it, the, and we talked about Uriah Faber, how he continues to improve. TJ Dillashaw, same thing. Guy is just continuing to improve and and over the two years we've been doing this show one of the uh, things we talk about constantly is that to to be successful in mma you have to constantly be evolving your game you cannot become stagnant because once you become stagnant you will get passed and it seems like the guys at team alpha male across the board are con- are doing that they're improving every time we see them come out now we see a we see a better version of those fighters and that's what i think we're seeing with tj Dill- dillashaw as a better version of him i mean he's got for me, to me, some really slick uh, ground transitions. He's now getting the, the the striking game going. I mean, this is this guy's going to be uh, be really interested to see what this guy looks like uh, another six seven months down the road. Yeah, I'm thinking even more long term. It's going to be interesting to see who looks like another two years down the road because I'm not sure how long Uriah Faber plans on fighting. Uh, and he could uh, Dillashaw could very much be the guy who who takes over from him as a as the bantamweight and the, the leading I wouldn't say leading figure of alpha male but I'm pretty sure you're right they will always be there but in terms of you know fighting a bantamweight you'll finally have Chad Mendes at featherweight TJ Dillashaw at your bantamweight and uh, team uh, sorry Joseph Benavidez at flyweight and you could just have the greatest lightweight team on the planet, American side, taking everything away from Nova Uniao. So it could be very interesting. Um, on to the next fight. George, Jorge, George Masvidal, whatever you want to call it, defeats Tim Means <laughs> in a... Um, I don't know. I, I had Tim Means winning, so I don't really feel like Tim Means lost. But on the scorecards, he lost 29-28. Um question to both of you and it's gonna go, i'm gonna go straight to matt first because i asked ken the first question last time is the powerful two takedown is sorry is the powerful two takedown is the takedown too powerful in mma because i'm start, i'm really believing it still is i thought things might have got better but i don't think it has in this fight, I'm going to say no because Masvidal, although he wasn't really landing the shots, but he was throwing shots. When he when he'd get means on his back, he would he would posture up, and, and he had a, had some uh, uh, two or three times where he was just going berserk throwing punches. Um, but yes, I do think the takedowns still get awarded way too much, uh, too many points. Uh, in in the on the judges scoring card, I think that BJ Penn had it uh, pretty uh, had it the way I think it should be scored, which is if you get the takedown and you do zero damage, the takedown doesn't score. Yes. Uh, that's for me. I mean, and that's coming from a wrestler. So I, I just but in MMA, I think that uh, I can't. I don't like that you know guys getting the takedown at the end of the you know last ten seconds to ice around kind of thing. I, I'm just not a fan of that. So. Um, I think that uh, yes, the takedown still is is weighing way too heavily. Uh, unless you're unless it's where you you know you get eight or nine in a round or something ridiculous, then never mind. But if it's you know one or two, I think that that's uh, yeah, it's just too much. Cool, cool, cool. So for Ken, Ken, what were your thoughts on the, the whole takedown thing? Because I just I think it, I I I came out of the fight more impressed with Tim Means than I was with George and Matt, George Masvidal. Masvidal so. As far as takedowns, I kind of agree with Matt, I would say. Um, it, it, I think they focus too much on the takedown itself, and I agree that you should do something with it after you get the guy down, at least something. If you just take a guy down and do nothing, um, I think that should be zero, um, mm. in my opinion. As far as the Tim Means fight and Jorge Masvidal, uh, it, it, was, uh, it was a very competitive fight, a lot more competitive than I thought it was, uh, that, that I, I expected it to be. Um, Jorge, 
Uh, he's a very good counterpuncher. Um, I thought he was going to use more wrestling in this fight, knowing that Tim Means is dangerous in the stand-up. And Means, um, I th- he had a, a, a great last round. Um, I thought it was a fair decision. Um, Means will be back, though. Um, he showed that you know he, he can hang uh, with guys that are, are very well-rounded, like Jorge Masvidal is, in my opinion. Um, I, I think maybe I'm just a little bit bitter because that screwed up my cue <laughs> later. That could I, be the reason. The, yeah, I, I was. I think it was a very close decision, and uh, I think Means is just a, just a, you know up in the scrambling, just a little bit away from being uh, being able to handle some of the top uh, top fifteen guys in, in the in the division. I mean, the guy's got some pretty slick stand up, and uh, and on the ground, if he can just get to where he can scramble and get back off, get back to his feet, um, that guy's going to be tough. I love watching him fight, so I've been happy to. I've enjoyed all three of his fights. It's that Carlos yeah, Condit sort of. He did. He does remind me of like a lightweight Carlos Condit, really. I mean, just the way they throw punches, the awkward angles, uh, okay-ish wrestling defense, but not enough wrestling defense to really stop a takedown and um, that sort of victory. Um, back to Team Alpha Male because they were all over the card. Joseph Benavidez versus Darren. Are you really going to make me try and say his surname? <laughs> I think you should. Again, Oyenoyama, I think that's something like that. <laughs> Oyenoyama, I'm going to go with what Ken said. Um, Uyen so, Oyama. What, what did you say, sorry? Uyen Oyama. Uyen Oyama, yeah. okay, cool. What, can I just call him Uy? I guess. Go ahead. It's, uh, DC, it's our it's show, we can pretty much call him whatever we want. <laughs> so I'll call him Uyen Oyama. Uh, Darren Uyen Oyama um, got beaten in a virtuoso performance from Joseph Benavidez who just, Benavidez, Benavidez was just in a different class, and it really, it really, really showed. Darren Uyanama is a fantastic <laughs> grappler, but that is certainly not enough when you're facing someone like Benavidez, who will invoke his inner Baz Rutan and liver kick you to hell. Thoughts, Ken? Uh, my thoughts, same thoughts. Um, he was... Uh... Uh, Darren Yeniyama was essentially uh, Joey Benavidez's punching bag through the course of the <laughs> evening. That's pretty much the story of that fight. He kept on. He he knew it was coming, and he kept coming and getting caught, and uh, that was pretty much it. He knew what was gonna, how it was gonna end. It was just a matter of time. Exactly. Now, uh, with, with Benavidez and the skills he has, he says he doesn't want a title shot straight away. He wants to get a few more fights down, flyweight. Who do you give him next? Because he's already beat Ian McCall, who might be the most overhyped fighter to ever join the UFC behind <laughs> Hector Lombard and various other people. I'm praying to God Hector Lombard doesn't hear this because I've heard the craziest stories about him. Um, who would you have? Talking to me? Did we lose Andre again? Yeah, I'm here. Hello? Okay, you're there. I'm here. I, I, I'm, I'm waiting for Ken to answer the question. Okay. Oh, my bad. Well, there's only like four guys in the division, so there's not really a, <laughs> four guys that equal a lot of people to put them with. I mean, who's, 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 whose turn is it to get a title shot? Um, the loser of that of the number one contender fight, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I kind of want to see him fight um, John Dodson. John Dodson or, or what's, uh, what's Moraga doing? Yeah, Moraga, Moraga is waiting in the wings for uh, Demetrius Johnson, I believe. I, I believe that's still... The, the, he has the title fight. shot? Okay. I think they're probably going to fight, and I think they're probably going to have the title shot in UFC and Fox 8. I think they should Washington. just take Moraga, Benavidez, Johnson, and Dotson and put them all in the cage at the same time. Fatal four-way style? I like yeah, how you I think, think that, uh, I think that that's what we should do, and that's just that should be the flyweight. Anytime we want a flyweight fight, that's just what they should do. Just take all four in the cage at the same time and see what happens. I'd probably like vomit it. from motion sickness. <laughs> I'm gonna lie. Um, Miles Jury versus Rap. Someone's phone's vibrating. No, it's not mine. Vibrating? Not mine. Not mine. <laughs> He's on his I, phone, so that'd be kind of hard for his. Vibe. Yeah, no, that's my. It's my flatmate's phone who's vibrating. Cool. Um, <laughs> it's me. Miles Jury versus Ramsey Nijum. Um Might be my favorite knockout of the year, just because of the face. Oh, that's Doing not very what, nice. I'm I'm sorry. I, this is really that's really bad of me to say. Are you say. talking about the slow mo shot from overhead? Yeah, yeah, slow mo <laughs> shot from so overhead. Horrible. Was beautiful. 
Um, I missed that one. I missed that that angle. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was bad. It was one it was one of those super slow mo camera shots, and you could just see his face kind of and it was wow, it was bad. Yeah. It's not something you want to show the kids. How far can Miles Jury go, Matt? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, the kid has has looked great so far, but I mean, you know, Ramsey Ninja, I'm not not anybody that you know blowing me away. Um, I guess you know, give him somebody that's a a top fifteen guy and uh, and see how he fares. But I know he's young. He's got his own jujitsu. I mean, that's more than what I've got. Mm. So, <laughs> that, is, that is very true. Um, <laughs> Ken, your thoughts on Miles Jury and how far this kid can go? I, I guess he's yet to be tested. Um, he took on a lot of wrestlers with limited stand-up. So um, along that line, I like I, I top 20, definitely keep testing him. You know, don't, you, you want to uh, bring him up slowly because he is a, you know, he's a hot prospect. Bring him up slowly. Uh, give him somebody with a more uh, developed stand-up game maybe this time around. You could maybe look at uh, the loser of uh, Cerrone, KJ Noons, or yeah. maybe the winner even. No, I agree. I think Donald Cerrone would tool him up. If I'm honest, uh, but it'd be a very good fight, a very exciting fight, and I, I like what I'm seeing from Miles Jury. Uh, personally, I wouldn't mind seeing him face the winner of uh, whoever's fighting Rustam Habalov next. Habalov. Anyone, suplex. anyone remember him, German suplex king? The count, yeah, he's fighting yeah. Terrence. There, Yancey Miradoz. Yeah, so Hawaiian, the Hawaiian. I'm sure Ken's a yeah. big fan of him. I, I'm, I'm Hawaiian. <laughs> I don't even know who Yancey Miradoz is. I'm, I don't even know a guy named Yancey ever. So um, I'm uh, curious. That's, that's, yeah, a, that's a great name, though, Yancey. <laughs> Yancey. That's crazy. He must have got sick <laughs> on a lot. But um, yeah, I don't think he, it, Russian Sambo is no joke. <laughs> um, Concussion City with those suplexes, but I guess we're going to talk about that with our picks coming up, so let's move on. I guess. Yes, yes, we can. We can indeed. Um, the fight that pissed me off to no end last night, I Coast don't line. even want to talk Coast about line. it because I'm so, so upset still. Francis Common defeats, and I say this with, you know, the... No, don't even air, say it. Sweet marks. <laughs> uh, defeats Lorenz Larkin... Somehow, some way, someone try and make me feel better because I'm just incredibly angry still. Um, well, the positive is, is that Francis Cameron's going to fight again, and he's going to fight somebody a little bit better than Lorenz Larkin and probably get murdered. I mean, that's that's the positive. Francis Cameron is a main card killer. Uh, <laughs> he made that fight boring. And what I loved a lot about that was watching Lorenz Larkin's takedown defense. I thought he should have oh, got yeah. the first round for that alone. Yeah, so that was absolutely lifting the leg ridiculous. Up to his head and he wouldn't go down. That was some of the best takedown defense I've ever seen. And I'm a wrestler as well. So, yeah, that was a positive note of that fight, I thought. Do you, do you think BJ Penn was smiling, smiling a little bit whilst watching that fight? <laughs> I'm sure he was. I'm sure he was. <laughs> that's Screaming, I think th- I think screaming that's, fuck those wrestlers. <laughs> that's part of the uh, judging problem is that they don't score takedown defense. I don't think that gets you anywhere with the judges. So I don't know how, which I think that I that's think wrong. So. Well, no, I agree with you, but because the first round, if they gave that to Carmont, I don't know how they could have possibly given I, it to him because all he did was hold Lorenz Larkin yep, against the fence. I think it's just, all, it's just the way the, rule, the rules were written. It's just ring control. He, he stayed in the center of the octagon and pushed Larkin against the cage. It's ridiculous, and it, it shouldn't happen, but I think that it's just the way it's written, and I think that, they, that it needs to be changed. They changed the what, – what they, I can't remember. They made a few changes a couple years ago, or maybe it was last year, but they still need to go back in there and rework it more. One takedown out of ten. Yeah, no, that's it's yeah. insane. I agree. One out of ten, and I think Larkin outstruck him every round. Yep, I, I agree. Yep. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't like picking him apart, but he was landing definitely a lot more. I honestly don't know how Carmont pulled that pulled that win out. He's he's got something going on there. With the judges, <laughs> he, I have no idea he's, how he won that he's fight. He's a he's a he's a poor version of GSP, and I'm not afraid to say it. And anyone who wants to try and challenge him, yeah, he's not I'll even go, a poor version of go, GSP. Go watch that fight. I, I oh, give yeah. him way too much credit. 
food stamp. Well, I try to be as nice as I possibly can, but I'm obviously <laughs> very upset. Um, let's move on from that fight because I'm really sure there's not much to say about. No. <laughs> Other than Lorenz Larkin looks... Um, Francis like, you know, uh Chad he, Mendes. He's a good prospect. Versus... Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, carry on. Were you going to say about Lorenz Larkin? Oh, no, I was, just, I was just saying the only thing you can pull from that fight is that Lorenz Larkin is going to be... I think he's a good prospect. He just has to, you know, work on his ground game because his striking is, is, is solid as far as, uh, as, far as uh, MMA is concerned. Hey, so. man, any dude that <laughs> comes out to suicidal tendencies gets a, a first... A first from me, so congrats, Mr. Lorenz Larkin. You impressed in defeat. On to the next one, Chad Mendes versus Darren Elkins. In I, I believe, I believe Darren Elkins was the biggest underdog of the night. Um, Darren Elkins coming into the fight was very impressive in all of his wins, besides from the Michiara Amigawa one, where he lost but won. Um, yeah. But he got blitzed, Dwayne Ludwig style. Dwayne Ludwig, what, it's, if you face someone who's being trained by Dwayne Ludwig, you might as well just give them their money now, because these guys are blitzkrieg in everyone. I don't think I think they finished every single opponent this year from Team Alpha Male. I, it's kind of hard to say anymore because I feel like we've said it more, said everything that can be said with Joseph Benavidez and T.J. Dillashaw. But any thoughts on Chad Money Mendez versus Darren Elkins, Matt? Nah. Yeah, I, it's it's just more of the same. I mean, just these guys look sick. I mean, I remember just a couple of years ago making fun of Team Alpha Male on a regular basis, um, and, and now uh, that's not going to be the case. So I mean, they're they just continue to look better. And Darren Elkins, I mean, took the fight on short notice. I don't know that a full camp would have mattered <laughs> as quickly as Mendez just went right through him. Um, and, and Elkins, you know, he he was on a, a win streak, but he was fighting a lot of middle tier guys. He fought a Diego Brandau that hadn't figured out uh, what he was going to do inside the cage just yet. I mean, uh, I think if he fights, fought Diego Brando now, I think Brando would, uh, would would take care of business. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's not really surprising that Mendez did what he did. Um, it's a, I guess it's surprising that he finished him as quick as he did. Uh, I didn't think that would happen. But uh, but Mendez, man, he's just he's looking nasty. I still don't see him beating Jose Aldo though. Okay, no. okay, okay. Uh, Ken, thoughts? Uh, same. Thoughts, more or less. Um, he got KO'd by Aldo, and since then he's finished every fighter via TKO or KO. So he's he's on the uh, that, that lit a fire under his ass. Apparently, um, I don't know when Bang Ludwig officially signed on as a striking coach, but since you know Mendez is a, is a beast right now as far as uh, finishing opponents with his striking. So yeah, that's very true. That's very true. It's very true. Um... Matt Brown versus Jordan Mean. Oh, Matt, the immor- Matt, the immortal, the immortal Brown. This man will not die. He will not die. And apparently that's true because even though the dude was supposed to be cut by the UFC, apparently he's now on a five-fight win streak and he's finished three of those two fights. What the fuck? <laughs> Ken, explain to me. Ken, get, get, tell me what the hell's going on because I, I feel, I feel, I, I remember Brian Foster jacking him and thinking this guy should not be in the UFC, but now he, he's on the same winning streak that Carlos Condit had. Does he deserve a title shot? And should I be shot for saying that? He, he, he is was he was I, I'll say that uh, with emphasis that he was cons- I thought the like the Rocky Balboa of MMA, he, he had a lot of losses, um, he, matching his wins almost, I believe. And I think he's like 50 and 50, but uh, he's on a run. Five fights in a row? Wow. Um, that was probably one of my favorite fights of last <laughs> night. Uh, what he did to my favorite prospect uh, was insane. Insane. I thought, I thought, I really thought uh, Jordan was going to do a lot more with his striking, but I thought he got hurt in the last part of the first round, and Matt just followed up in the beginning of the second round with more of the same, and just his face was a mess. No, absolutely. That, that I feel the same way, man. Going into that fight, I was completely, uh, completely blown away by how bad Matt Brown just beat down Jordan Meehan. Outside of the what looked like was it maybe a liver shot that dropped Brown, it was absolutely yeah. brutal. 
And we've lost Andre again. <laughs> But no, I, I, I just, I, I, with Matt Brown, he said he, I saw the article where he wanted the title shot. I don't know that I can, uh, that I can agree with that. But uh, being that yeah, most of his his wins have been against prospects, and you know Mike Swick coming back after what a, a, a two year layoff, a year and a half layoff, uh, I, I don't see him fighting in the, fighting for a title shot. But he definitely needs to see somebody in the top ten. I agree with that. That's a good assessment. Top ten definitely. Um, He's earned it, definitely, after beating, wow, Jordan Meehan. Um, I, I picked Jordan Meehan. That was one of the fights I, I missed last night. but um, Not missed, but missed a pick. Um, yeah, that was very impressive. First, 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 first round game, and the strike was just rudimentary, but um, he's a brawler, and he's, he's proud of it. And he, he, he's, uh, I, th- I think a, a writer said he's the next uh, Chris Lytle. <laughs> well, he's definitely he's, he's got he's a, he has a huge fan base too. So I mean, there, there's a lot of people out there that are behind him. So he'll be real interested to see uh, to see to see where he goes from here. Um, Josh Thompson, Nate Diaz, next fight on the card. Uh, I, I watched your picks, Ken. So I know that you had uh, Thompson. I think you had him winning a UD. Is that right? Yes, I did. Yeah, I, I was going with Nate Diaz. I thought Diaz would. Uh, would eventually overwhelm Thompson. Although I'm a big fan of Thompson going into this fight, I thought it was going to be a fantastic fight, and it turned out to be just Josh really uh, putting it on Nate with a fantastic game plan that he did not veer from. Which is, it seems to be like the running thing with the Diaz brothers. If you come in with the right game plan, you're and you're a solid fighter, you're going to be able to pull out the win. Uh, and as long as you don't get roped into what they're wanting you to do. So, uh, what were your thoughts on that fight? Uh, I was very impressed with Josh Thompson. I did take him to win. Um, it, it, it's um, what can I say? Uh, I've been a fan of his for a long time too. I know he hasn't been in the octagon for a, a better part of almost ten years, um, and I knew he had the tools to beat Nate. And like you said, it's uh, Diaz brothers. Um, they haven't evolved a lot. You know what to expect when you face them. So if you can, you know, prepare for that and make the adjustments. Um, he uses kicks. Nate wasn't really checking kicks, and definitely that shin across the side of his head he wasn't <laughs> expecting. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's got, a, he's got a full tank of gas. Uh, you know, he's got all the tools needed to beat a, a Diaz, I will say. So, uh, yeah, more power to him, man. I'm very impressed, and I'm, I'm very happy for him. Where do you think uh, he goes in the lightweight division? I don't uh, I mean, he just he just fought he just fought for the. I mean, would you want to see a Gil, another Gilbert Melendez Josh Thompson fight? I would, but um, I don't like to see strike force guys take strike force guys. Let's stick them against the UFC guy. Maybe the loser of um, who does Jim Miller have? Who does Jim Miller have? Pat Healy, I believe. Pat Healy, yeah. right? Um, but that could put Pat, him against Pat Healy. Give him, just, give him Josh Thompson. That'd be a good test. Okay, yeah, I, I could see that, or maybe uh, maybe give him the loser of the T.J. Grant Gray Maynard fight. I I wouldn't mind watching that fight happen. Um, there you go. But yeah, but no, regardless, uh, he looked he looked really 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 good. Uh, and then we get the Daniel Cormier versus uh, Frank Mir fight, which for me was a little bit disappointing because I really felt like Daniel was was pacing himself in this fight and was just trying to avoid a breaking his hand again and uh, just trying to get out of there with the UD. Um, what were your thoughts on it? I agree. I, he did come in with a game plan. Um, that was just, uh, and um, I picked him to win. I think I think everybody picked him to win, um, except for the hardcore Mir fans. But um, <laughs> he, he trapped him. You know, he, he had him up against the cage, held him there, did his dirty boxing. I thought he was going to finish him uh, in my picks, but um, Frank uh, held on. You know, he's got a more solid chin than uh, than we thought. <laughs> Because that was uh, it was a very lackluster fight. Uh, honestly, between you and me, I don't think Daniel's going to be in the division for too long. You know, his buddy, his AKA training partner, Kane, is there, so I think he's going to make the drop down to light heavyweight. In my honest opinion, I really think so. And he's not a spring chicken; he's in his mid 30s, so I think he's going to do it soon. So I, I think his days are numbered at, at uh, heavyweight. I, I totally agree with you. I actually think that that's that's what he'll be doing next. I don't think we'll see him at heavyweight again. I think he'll make. He'll make the drop. Uh, we'll, he'll make the announcement here in the next month that he's going to drop it and, and, and get down in the light heavyweight division. He's already said that he wants John Jones. Um, I don't think that he drops and gets John Jones, but he'll definitely get a. I think he can drop and get a top five guy, win that fight, and definitely. then get the John Jones fight. Definitely, there's a lot of big fights to, for him to have down there. 
No, and he's an exciting fighter. So I, my only worry, and I said it like ten times last night, was is, is about his hand because he's broke his hand twice in in, in matches, and right. it, I don't I hope that he's not you know, the Arturo Gotti of MMA, but he's going to break <laughs> his hand every time that he, you know he goes for broken fights. I hope not. I hope not. Yeah. So that that's the only that's the only thing that worries me about him. But other than that, I love watching DC fight. Uh, and and you know I got to meet him uh, last year. Dude is super cool, really nice guy. And the fact that he and I are about the same shape, it, you know, it makes me support him that much more. <laughs> Michelin man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then we have uh, the final fight of the night: the Benson, Hender- Benson Henderson, Gilbert Melendez. Uh, my uh, timeline was all over the place with scores. How how did you end up scoring the fight? I and when I think back, I gave Gil rounds one and five. I gave. Um, Bendo rounds three and four. The second round I thought was a little up in the air, and I have to watch it again. But I thought it was close. Uh, judges saw the same thing as well. Um, so I, don't, I, I, I saw that they posted uh, what each judge uh, gave for uh, each fighter, which round, um, and they were all over the place. The, judge, the scores were all over the place. But I thought definitely I saw Gil one round one, five, and uh, Bendo three and four. And then I guess he won the third round or the first, second round. So uh, I agree with Ken. Can anyone actually hear me? <laughs> oh, well, I'm just talking. To <laughs> yes, we can hear you for now. All right, cool. Um, sorry about that, Ken. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I agree with Ken. I had uh, Melendez winning, but because it was such a such a close fight, it's uh, yeah, it was, it was such a close fight. It was you know it was difficult to really. It was difficult to really figure out what was going on. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure our doors close so you don't hear random spraying from food. But um, yeah, no, I had Melendez winning. I'm not sure. It was definitely a close fight. Henderson fans will be like, "Yeah, Henderson won." It's it's just typical Benson Henderson fight. He makes it relatively exciting and relatively close, but somehow edges out the win and causes controversy most of the time so I wasn't really that much I wasn't really surprised if I'm honest yeah, yeah I, I actually had Henderson finish. win in the fight uh, yeah yeah I, I had him win in but it was a very very close decision and I, I just felt like that Henderson landed the cleaner shots and I thought the big difference for me, the big the game changer, was when Henderson, uh, initially when Henderson would move in and get tight with Gilbert, Gilbert would go off with three or four combos super fast. Henderson would just jump out and get out of them. I think in the latter part of the second round, or maybe it was the third round, uh, Benson started exchanging. And I felt yeah. like he was winning those exchanges. And uh, and I was I was hoping that he would keep up with that, but he did let the stop stop with the uh, just the brawling style there towards the fourth and fifth round. But I really felt like that made a little bit of a difference in the fight where when uh, Benson just was willing to sit and trade and exchange with Gilbert, and and, and to me he just outlanded Gilbert a little just just slightly uh, and, and enough to win the fight. Um, he uh, but it, he was winning. He outstruck him by over fifty strikes according to uh, fight metrics. Okay, see, I didn't even uh, see that. That's insane. I, mean, he outstruck, I didn't, out I didn't think he hit him. He outstruck him in every round, and uh, he landed more leg kicks, obviously, and he landed more body punches as well. I, I think they gave, a, uh, you know, Gil a lot of, uh, you know, cred for his uh, uh, aggression and pushing forward as well. So, yeah, he did outstrike him by a, a considerable amount. It's, and I was I was impressed with Gilbert Melendez because I really going into this fight I thought that Benson I, I didn't think he'd win it handily but I thought that he would uh, I thought that he would he would win it going away uh, towards the end but but Melendez I think that was the, probably the best Melendez at least as far as I'm concerned the best Melendez I've seen in, in a while. I have a question for both of you. Um, now that he's won this fight and we all know that he has won this fight. Uh, Benson Henderson is now drawing with BJ Penn for a number of lightweight title defenses. Is he the best lightweight ever? No. Ever? Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, yet. no. <laughs> Not yet. What, what, what does Benson he's Henderson got, need to do good, uh... to get that to get that sort of title? He, uh, he needs just needs for four, me. He four needs more to, wins. <laughs> yeah, some more wins and some devastating wins. I mean, that, yeah, that's and it's the thing of it is for me though is is that the lightweight division he's fighting in is extremely good. It's better than the the division that BJ Penn uh, the when BJ Penn was fighting. 
at least as far as I, when I look at it, I think this lightweight division is one of the best divisions in MMA, and it's it's a highly competitive division. So is he going to get fights where he blows people out? I doubt it because I think a lot of these fights are going to be really competitive. Um, so he, the only thing he can do is just like uh, Ken said, is get more wins. Okay, 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 okay. Well, um, hopefully I can actually stay on the line for some more of this without me getting absolutely... Well, apparently there were gunshots going off in the background. I don't live in the hood, by the way. Um, <laughs> Do what? Apparently, according to Erica, there were gunshots when I tried to bring back in. She heard something that sounded kind of like gunshots. So I just wanted to make oh, I sure... Those. Make, I just wanted to make wow. sure everyone knows that I didn't... I, I'm, I'm not in the hood, so... Um, yeah, right. Let's. It was a firefight, according to Erica. Um, I'm looking at UFC 159. I'm looking okay. at the Facebook and FX card. Um, is there any fights that you guys particularly want to talk about? Because I am perfectly fine just going from the bottom to the top of the main card. Sounds good to me. Okay. Good to me. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Jim Miller versus Pat Healy. Ken, since you're the guest, you may start off proceedings and uh, tell us what your thoughts are. Who's going to win? Um, Miller against Healy. That's a good fight. Uh, very similar guys in terms of they're very tough and gritty fighters. Uh, I know Miller had a fight of the night performance against J-Lo, so he, he's, he's coming in with a little momentum. Healy, he was supposed to fight Gil, and um, people thought that he had a chance against Gil, but after last night's performance, he would have gotten mauled by Gil. Mm. Um, still, you know, you know what to expect. This fight, um, uh, let me think. Mm. Generally, if you can beat Jim Miller, you get a title shot. <laughs> uh, and I don't think Pat Healy is at that level yet. I don't think yeah. he definitely. I don't think he'll. I think Miller has this all the way. I think he's a better wrestler. I think he's a better striker. He's got a better sub game as well um, with his jujitsu. Uh, I got Miller all day winning this fight. Definitely. Cool, Matt. Who have you got? You guys are have to help me here, but I was pretty sure that when Pat Healy fought Kurt Holabaugh in his last fight at Strike Force, I was thinking that I gave that fight to Kurt, and it was a really, really close decision. It was close. It's, I it's, I, I, it's, it's been so long that I, I can't. I mean, trying I to remember it. the fight, but I'm I'm pretty sure I was like, yeah, I think that Pat got a gift there. Jim Miller wins this fight hands down for me. Jim Miller, I think, is better at, across the board, just like Ken said. Um, Pat Healy is a uh, is a solid uh, lightweight. He's he's a a durable lightweight, so I think we'll probably see this go three rounds. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Miller finish him either. I mean, Jim Miller is—he uh, can—he can—he uh, can outstrike Healy. He can definitely outgrapple Healy, and I think he can outwrestle Healy. So I'm going Jim Miller all the way. Cool, cool, cool. Let me add, cool. Let me add, let me add to that real quick. I saw the Holabaugh fight against uh, Healy. I thought he could have—I thought Holabaugh could have won that if he didn't keep doing those uh, those drop down submission attempts. Um, he kept trying, you know, grabbing a head, trying to drop down for guillotine. I thought he could have won it otherwise. So, yeah, he's. Uh, I, I think uh, Holabot got that fight. And by the way, I think Holabot is going to beat Siler, So. Okay, <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Um, I'm not going to give my opinions because I can't be trusted with my internet right now, so I'm just going to try and mentor this session along. Uh, it, oh, actually, you know what? Gun Jim Miller wins. Bill Day. <laughs> I think we lost we lost Andre again. Phil Davis. Versus, oh, you're still here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I just said uh, UK Davis. internet absolutely sucks. I just like to put that out there. It's very true. It's very true. I was I never went anywhere. I I was speaking perfectly fine. <laughs> okay, you just cut out on us. So go ahead. Who who do we have next? Phil Davis versus Vinny Magalhaes. Matt, who have you got? Uh, I really think that this. I mean, Vinny's submission game is is sick. Um, Stand up wise, I think they're. Probably fairly even. Phil, I'm I'm kind of curious to see what Phil's stand-up game looks like uh, now because I know he's constantly working on it. I think this fight probably stays standing. I don't think it's going to be a real pretty fight. I think Phil Davis wins a UD. Um, I'm not really excited about this fight, even though they, you know, there's words being exchanged by the guys. Uh, not not nothing that's really got me uh, hot and bothered to watch him go at it. I think Phil gets the UD in this one. Could this be some Randy Couture dirty boxing type of shit? Ken thoughts. Definitely not. I, I don't think so. If it's any kind of stand-up war, it's going to be a very sloppy kickboxing fight. Um, or we might get treated to something like a, a Mitch, uh, Fitch, excuse me, Fitch Maya kind of fight. Mm. Uh, the high-level le- high ref- wrestler against a high-level grappler. Um, yeah, and, you know, 
anybody, uh, anytime it's a high level wrestler with some a good top control like Davis going against a high level grappler, uh, I always pick the high level or wrestler, excuse me, with uh, the good top control and good set defense. So I got to go with Davis as well. I think he'll avoid the submissions and get the UD as well. I'll go with Davis as well uh, because I trust Ken. If I'm honest. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Roy Nelson yeah. versus Chet Congo, heavyweight division. One with a chiseled physique and the one with... <laughs> it's, really, it's really opposite ends of the spectrum in every single possible way in this fight. Uh, Ken, who have you got? Well, um, well, I'm, I'm going to go with Roy Nelson, but I think, I think it's going to be similar to what Roy had uh, his fight against Kimbo Slice. Um, it's going to be a, similar to a bar fight, I'd say, but a hundred times better. Uh, I think Roy's just going to pin him up against the fence, uh, take him down, and just lay, smother him with his belly for three rounds. Uh, he might even get a submission. Who knows? Wait a minute. Are we talking about porn here or are we talking about fighting? <laughs> Smog- smothering of belly, submission? Well, it's, it's all Fifty Shades <laughs> of Grey up and across the pond, MMA. Um... <laughs> Matt, who have you got for Roy Nelson versus Chet Congo? I'm going with the the fatty too. Roy Nelson, I, I think he, he's going to take this fight. I tell you what really impressed me in Roy's last fight. I've been harping for quite some time about Roy doing something other than the big overhand right. And in his last fight, he showed combos. For the first time in his career, he was throwing combos. And so that being Is said, going into this combos? fight. No. Combos. He wasn't eating combos. He was throwing combos. Roy Nelson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, no. But I, I was completely blown away by that. And so I think that Roy Nelson, uh, I'm not a big fan of Chet Congo. Not a big fan of Chet Congo stand up. It's very, very stiff. I think Roy can easily catch Chet coming in and flatten him. I think Roy can get him on the ground and, and win a grappling match very easily. I don't see any way Chet Congo wins this fight. He's not knocking out Roy Nelson. And uh, and with Roy's power, I think that he, if they stay standing in the center of the cage, I think Roy could clip him. So uh, I'm going with uh, Roy Nelson in this one. Um, I don't care about the fight, but I'll say Roy Nelson. Um, Michael Bissing versus Alan Belcher. Matt, who have you got for this? Man, I'm really excited to watch this fight. Uh, two great strikers. Um, I think that Michael Bisping's counter-striking, though, is going to be the difference in this fight. Belcher likes to uh, be very aggressive and come forward, and, and Bisping has got great defense, uh, defensive striking and moves his head well. And he, he does something a lot of MMA fighters, I think, still haven't quite figured that out yet, is that he protects his jaw with his shoulder when he's throwing his jab. And so I, I think that, uh, that his defensive striking and his ability to counterpunch, plus along with his wrestling, is going to be the difference in this fight. I think he gets a UD over Belcher, though Belcher is very dynamic. Uh, you know, he showed he's got great sub defense. Bisping's not that great with submission, so that's not going to happen. Um, I mean, Belcher could clip him. He's got some power. Uh, but I just don't see it happening. I think Bisping wins the UD here. A technical breakdown from Matt Simpson showing that he actually knows what he's talking about. Sir so Ken, who you got? Um, I, well, yeah, what he said, ditto. Uh, but did you guys hear about his wager? <laughs> did you hear about his wager, Belcher's wager with uh, Bisling, that if he can finish him quick, he'll get a Union Jack tattoo? <laughs> no, I did not. I hope he's better than the Johnny Cash one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be over the top I, I, of the Johnny Cash one. I, I, oh, please. I say Bisping should up the ante and get uh, that Chaz Bono tattoo that uh, Alan Belcher has on his arm if he if he thinks. Oh, he <laughs> touche, Ken, touche. But yeah, I, I, was, I got Biz, I, I got Bisping winning the UD as well. I think he's gonna. He, he's a very great counter puncher, and you know he's gonna pedal his bike. He's gonna he's gonna avoid getting clocked, and he's gonna uh, counter punch his way to a victory. And with his solid takedown defense as well. So, yeah, UD for uh, count. Ken, there is nothing more that's going to get you back on this show than making Chaz Bono, Chaz Bono <laughs> references. Kudos, sir. Uh, kudos. Uh, John Jones versus Chel Sonnen. By the way, I think this going to win. Just saying. Oh, there, yeah. uh, John Jones versus Chel Sonnen. Right, I really think this is more of a prediction. It's more of a... Uh, and uh, a wager between three men and a lovely lady called Erica who probably won't actually get involved because she likes to say quiet. Um, how long does it take for John Jones to finish Chelsea on in round one, round two, round three, round four, or could lo and behold it go to all the way round five? Uh, I'll I'll step up. Um, this is good, like you said. This is going to be the most lopsided title fight in uh, UFC history, I think. 
Kale maybe has a 5% chance at best, and that's if John gets disqualified. You know, um, he can't outstrike him. Uh, he can't submit him. Um, his only shot is to out-wrestle him, and, you know, he couldn't even take Michael down. So I don't know, see how he takes John Bones Jones down. Um, yeah. Hey, the Brits can wrestle, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely got yeah. solid takedown defense, you guys. You're coming up. You're coming I'm up. Trying. Right. Um, <laughs> and, um I don't know, man. I, th- I think the only contest Chell would win over John is at testosterone level. Uh, um, but I gotta go. I gotta go, John Jones. Uh, I'll go second round. TKO due to elbows. Once he get on, gets on top of him. Okay, Matt. What are you thinking, sir? Well, I've said this once. I think I've said it twice, and I'm gonna say it a third time. The only way John Jones loses his fight is if he decides to train with the Black Zillions this week leading up to the fight. <laughs> that oh. is it. That is the only way he could possibly lose is by getting, you know, because the, the Black Zillions can tr- can take the win out of anybody. So I think that it's possible if that happens that we that we see John Jones loses lose his title. But uh, no, there's no way he loses, and and I think that Ken's probably right. I mean, we're looking at a second round TKO mainly because the first round John typically just uh, fills out his opponent and and doesn't go for the kill. But I mean, and Chael, I mean, if you look, the other thing is listening to Chael going into this fight. You know, Chael sounds like he's already lost. I mean, he's done. He cuts the promos and stuff. But whenever anybody like talks to him about the fight, he kind of just brushes it off. If he's not doing a promo, you you can just hear it in his voice. He's like, "This really sucks that I have to do this. This is going to be bad." And so I I, I don't see any chance for Chael to win wrestling his way there. That's not going to happen. So TKO second round. Uh, uh, John Jones is going to retain his title. Yeah, safe to say that I completely agree with both of you. <laughs> I'm not going to try and throw, be like a hipster and be like, no, man, Chelsea's going to win. Be Anderson Silver all over time. I think that you should. I think you should play devil's advocate and try to talk us into yeah. you know believing that Chelsea can win this fight. Team Dark Side. I, 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 that's racist. I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm 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 not going to do that because I'm not that good. I'm good, but I am not that good. I genuinely don't think I could. I I could probably convince my mum, who knows very little about mixed martial arts, be like, "Yo, that Sonnen kid, he will tear through John Jones." But anyone who knows an, a tiny, insy bit about mixed martial arts and knows who John Jones and Chael Sonnen are will know that this will be an ass whooping of the year. And I, you know, I got a question for Ken. What if? Going into this fight, well, actually going into tough. I mean, after watching these two guys on tough, did your opinions change uh, on these guys? Or, or I mean, were you already uh, on both of these guys' bandwagons where you like both fighters? Um, I was never a big fan of John Jones. You know, <laughs> it's just, you know, they all can't be like, you know, champions all can't be like, you know, Cain Velasquez. You know, he's just not a role model of a champion. You know. Um, and Chael, you know, he's a character. What's not to like about him? You, you know, we need that. If, if Chael wasn't in, in MMA, we would have had to uh, invent him, you know? But Oh, he, oh Chael Sonnen's invented. Don't worry about that. Um, but, yeah, I, I agree with Ken. Um, I don't really have any feelings towards fighters anymore. I just sort of think you go in there, you go do your job, and I'll speak to you one day, but I don't really... I don't believe in the whole role model thing in terms of celebrities and that sort of stuff. If you want, to, if you want to look for role models, you look for role models with your your, your, your parents or or that sort of stuff, or teachers or something like that. You shouldn't be look for role models of celebrities because celebrities are fucking crazy. Look at Lindsay Lohan. So you know that's that's just my. So are you comparing it. John Jones she's to my, Lindsay Lohan? Yeah, they, bo- they both got uh, <laughs> car troubles. So what? What's your point? I well, for me though, I tell you what, man, I I was. I've been against John Jones for some time as far as just liking the guy. And he really grew on me on tough. I really enjoyed listening to the, I, I enjoy actually they both grew on me because I was kind of sick of Chael and I was not a big fan of John Jones other than watching him fight because he's an amazing fighter. Um, but they both grew on me. So after the, after the show was over with, I actually like both these guys. Um, I really look forward to listening to Chael talk, uh, do his, do his, uh, do the, uh, analyzing the fights. I can't talk analyzing fights. I think he does a great job sitting behind the desk with a mic in front of him. And, uh, and like I said, John got me on his side, man. I'm, I'm 
pulling for him, and and I hope he continues to to do well. So I enjoyed watching uh, watching Tough and watching these guys. Uh, uh, to me, win some fans. Yeah, I would, I would, I would. If John you Jones, fight with charisma, like you said, Charles he grew, he grew on here as well. Champion. But he was trying to give these guys some techniques that only he could do. He was trying to teach these guys to throw elbows from the guard. And I'm like, John, you have like <laughs> seven foot arms. How are these guys going to do that? <laughs> but um, yeah. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah, I've, I've, that's pretty much UFC 159. Um, besides from you know, obviously the BFX and the prelim card, but uh, that I think that's it in regard to MMA. Ken, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm sorry, but I've missed uh, a small amount of uh, you being on the show due to my internet being as bad as Lindsay Lohan in a strip club. But um, thank you for coming onto the show, and uh, hopefully we get you back again soon. It'll be awesome to do that. I appreciate having me, guys. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, hope you guys don't lose too many subscribers after this show. <laughs> uh, I think we'll be okay. I don't think we have any. Hey. <laughs> yeah, say, we might, it's hard to lose zero. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, for everybody out there, you got to check out Touché. Super Kenny's blog. Touché. Guys, have a great eve- have a great fight week. All right, I'll talk to you. I'll, I'm sure I'll see you guys on Twitter. For sure, right. for sure, for sure. Take it easy, Ken. Take care, guys. Take care. Erica, is it just me and Matt now? I believe it is. It is just, just you and I. It's just you and I. But I, but before we head over to entertainment, I just want to tell everybody to go check out Surfer Ken's blog on YouTube. It's S U F or S U R F E R K E N. It's really fine. Google it. Uh, the dude uh, is is the, like I said, he nails his predictions. Right? Go check it out. He's he's a good watch. Indeed, 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 indeed. Completely agree with you. Surfer Ken is a good watch. And he gets his shit right, so that's all you need to know, especially if you're a betting man such as myself. Um, let's let's jump into entertainment. Erica, would you like to join us? It's been a long time, and I've missed you. It's been a long time. I shouldn't have left you. Left I knew you were going to do that. that. I knew you were going to do that. Um, right. Let, uh, has anyone seen any new films recently? Because I watched the film last Sunday, which I would have talked about last Sunday, but my internet was acting like dog shit. Um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll wait until um, till you guys have said what you got to say, and then I'll talk to you guys about the film I saw. Um, Erica, what, did you see any films recently? Seen any TV shows? What's, what's, what's popping? Um... I do have to say I was pretty, uh, you know, the events that happened uh, in Boston on Monday mm-hmm. had quite an effect on everyone uh, in the United States. And mm-hmm. not to sound flippant, but I was pretty pissed when Happy Endings was preempted by coverage of capturing the son of a bitch. So I'm pissed at him for quite a few reasons, including mm-hmm. fucking up my Friday night Happy Endings Um which mm. still has a chance to be saved as a television show. Have you been watching ah, it, sir? I told you. I told you it's not dead yet. It it's is like dead. Matt, it's like Matt Brown, the immortal. No, do you know you know what's going on right here? Apparently, Sony are looking to... Uh, no, I think... I actually can't remember who's looking to potentially buy it. But apparently, it's looking very good. So, whatever, Matt. Stop hating. <laughs> oh, it's uh, a great uh, show, man. Yeah. Oh, and I have finally... Mm-hmm. Caught up on Game of Thrones. Okay, so you you you're caught up as far as you watched last Sunday's episode, or you're getting ready to watch this season? No, I have watched everything that is available up until this point. So Andre's the only loser in the group. Yeah, Andre, dude, yeah. seriously, it's an amazing show. I didn't think I was going to like it. I really didn't think I was going to like it. Uh, <laughs> It's not like I haven't tried, you know what I mean? It was around this time last year that I actually tried to watch it. And uh, I watched, like, the first 20 minutes, and my, I just couldn't. My, my brain did not click with it for some reason. I, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's... You're apologizing. You're <laughs> it, apologizing. It really was. That's, I mean, I watched the first So I watched the first episode. And I was like, oh, okay, so these mofos are going to piss me off on the first episode, which is smart television. You want to you wanna kind of evoke some sort of emotion out of your audience. You, you don't want to have this kind of sappy um, kind of placating ending to your episode. You want it to end in a way that, the, that your audience is like, what the fuck? What did you just yeah. do? 
So mm-hmm. the first episode definitely ended like that for me. And I was like, okay, I'll watch the second one. And then the second one, they killed one of the dogs. And I was like, mm, Erica don't spoilers, like that. Spoilers, spoilers. I mean, if you haven't watched the second episode of the first season at this point, then I don't know what to tell you. But it, no. doesn't, it doesn't really spoil a whole lot. I mean, it's it's... You know, it is what it is. So I really was, I was kind of like, do I really want to watch a show where, you know, they be killing animals like that? Because, you know, I'm not a vegan or a vegetarian or anything, but, you know, doggies are meant to be your friends and not to be killed. And I, I had a hard time with that, but it pissed me off. So I kept watching. And next thing I knew, I had watched all, two, I had watched two, the two seasons and the, um, I guess it's three episodes or four episodes. We're into season three now in like a week and a half. So they've done a good job. Kudos to you, good sirs. Well, I have a long, long train trip next week, so maybe I'll watch a few episodes on the train uh, to Liverpool. Um, Matt, what have you been watching, sir? I've been watching the same thing, Game of Thrones. Uh, There's not a whole lot on TV right now. Actually, you know what? I take that back. Bates Motel. Uh, I had, good? I, I've had that on the DVR. I watched like first the first I don't know forty minutes of the first episode, and then I can't remember what happened. Something happened. I shut it off, and uh, I I didn't come back to it for like four weeks, mm. and uh, just powered through all the episodes up to uh, this most recent one. Um, and yeah, it is. It's kind of weird at times that uh, some of the uh, the the way they've written the story is a little bit hard to swallow at times. But um, but overall, yeah, I'd say it's 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 got some legs, and if you're a uh, fan of the Psycho series, then uh, it's definitely worth checking out. I mean, it's not really a horror movie; it's more of a drama, uh, I don't know, drama murder mystery type deal. So um, it definitely doesn't really follow the Psycho type uh, storyline. But it's definitely, if you like, I said if you're interested in what what the whole reason why Norman Bates was Norman Bates, it's definitely worth checking out because he's a Flip the kid that plays Norman Bates is a weirdo for sure, and uh, yeah, I, I've enjoyed it. So I've watched that uh, again. Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, is fantastic. I really, I mean, you could sit and talk for hours about the uh, uh, about that show, which uh, obviously we can't though because Andre's not watched it. But uh, uh, yeah, I've enjoyed enjoyed Game of Thrones, and I'm trying to think there was something else that Hannibal. I've not got to watch that yet, but I've got it DVR'd, and it's gotten really good reviews. So I'm kind of excited to check that out. I have a question: Has anyone here watched Arrow? Yeah, I've been. I've watched the entire series. Uh, is, is it good? For me, I'm. I, it's hard for me to say yes because I'm a huge. I mean, like uh, all the DC comic book characters, Deathstroke is my favorite, and so the fact that they have Slade Wilson uh, in the in the show, I mean, it kind of gets me into the comic book nerd fa- effect. So I'm a little bit biased. It has. They have good episodes and they have bad episodes. It's 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 kind of hit and miss. It's basically Smallville. No, nah, it's a little different than Smallville. It's more like it's really more like Batman. I mean, like the uh, Chris <laughs> Nolan type, uh, just trying to pull, uh, trying to uh, score off of that. I mean, it's really they've made a really dark uh, Green Arrow, and uh, yeah, it, that's I mean that's pretty much it. I mean, so if if you like that type of stuff, you'll enjoy it. If you're a fan of Deathstroke, you will enjoy it because Slade Wilson is a bad mamma jamma in the show, which I was glad to see that. He's a bad mamma jamma. Yeah, absolutely. So, have you not watched? Yeah, so I take it you haven't watched any of the episodes. I watched the first episode, and I thought it was a little bit cringy. A little yeah, bit. you've got to you've got to give it a few episodes. And if you're a big fan of the DC universe, I mean, I think it's worth checking out. I mean, because they they have a bunch. I mean, they have uh, I can't remember who all they've had on it so far, but they've had a multiple uh, characters on it, and then they give them a little twist to make them, you know, realistic. So I I think it's it's decent. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's something to pass time. Okay, okay. Let's talk. Uh, talking of uh, DC, has anyone here seen the third Superman trailer? I no. have not. I really, I mean, after everybody was talking about it, I meant to w- sit down and watch it, and I have not. In fact, I'll pull it up, and I'll watch it right now. If you guys have seen it, you guys can talk about it. Uh, Erica, have you seen it? Uh, no, I have not. And... <laughs> um, here's the reason why, and, and uh, don't uh, don't judge me. I don't like Superman. Okay. I have never mm. liked Superman. Actually, I don't like Superman either. I can't stand Superman. I, and I am okay. definitely a DC comics fan, much more so than, than Marvel. Well, 
I think Marvel may have the better superheroes for the exception of DC having Batman. But DC has the better villains, I think, yeah. by far. And that's how nerdy I get. And I really, really... Pretty nerdy. Pretty nerdy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fairly nerdy to even break <laughs> it down like that. Um, but, uh, you know, I will watch it. Everybody's been talking about it. Maybe it'll change my mind about Superman. He just seems like such a goody, goody... Oh, it just gets on my nerves. Like, he's um, that person that you meet that's so optimistic about everything that you just instantly become a pessimist because you hate him for it. I don't know. Anything that... Well, considering anything that's involved, like, with Chris Nolan, I'm going to watch it. So, considering Chris Nolan helped write and produce this film, I'm going to give it a shot. And plus, the trailer looks awesome. So, I'll, I'll definitely be uh, be watching this film. Uh, I watched an independent film last Sunday called Compliance. Um, anyone, anyone ever heard of that film before? No, I haven't. What is it? Um... <laughs> Compliance is a a story based off seventy true stories that happened in the Ameri in, in America across a number of uh, restaurants and shops and all that sort of stuff where a prank caller would call and pretend to be a police officer. Now I'm not gonna uh, spoil what the, what happens in the film, but it's it's very disturbing and it's even more disturbing that there's a there's a serious like case for it and it involves McDonald's. There's like an, a genuine case where someone won a lot of money over some serious, serious fuckery. Um, it's quite hard to watch. Uh, it all, it kind of makes you go like it's it's hard to think how is this a true story? How could people be this stupid? But there is genuine like video camera evidence that this is a true story and this actually happened and it happened around not as to this le to the level of the film but there were 70 different cases all around the united states of this happening and it all happened from one person so uh, i would definitely say uh give it a shot uh it's definitely not one for the kids i can tell you that now um but it's a uh, it was a very good film um what else what else have i watched um, I feel like I've watched a documentary recently. No, I think that's about it. I've I've been very busy. I've been going to the gym trying to get my swole on. <laughs> nice. Well, I've I've now watched the the third Superman trailer, and mm -hmm. I will say it does look pretty amazing. I mean, the cinematics look ridiculous. So they look right up there with Star Trek. I mean, this is whoever if this isn't a great film, they've done a fantastic job of making you think that it's a great film. So uh, um, I think that it's it's going to have me just about as excited to see the new Star Trek as as to see this. I can tell you now. I can tell you now that um, a friend of mine has actually seen the film. Which one, Star Trek or Superman? Uh, a friend of mine has actually seen uh, Superman, and he was amazed. He told me um, it's probably the best film of the year. Holy crap. Well, the the final part of the trailer where Superman, I don't know who he's punching, but whoever, he's punching somebody across the sky. <laughs> looks I believe absolutely it, ridiculous. I believe it was General Zod. So okay, that, well, it looks, that. it doesn't matter who he's punching. It just, it does look absolutely sick. And he's hitting him so fast, you can't tell who it is. Yeah. Um, I'm also, I'm, I'm very excited for Star Trek. I didn't think I would be. Um because I just I like I sort of go a little bit weird when someone goes, oh, I'm going to go see Star Trek. I'm like, uh, that's a bit too geeky for me. That's above my geek level. Uh, but that this film looks really good. It sort of reminds me of like what they did with the James Bond reboot. If you know what I mean? No, no for sure. Okay. Yeah. No. no I, I, I'm very looking forward to. It. I'm I'm looking forward to see uh, how Benedict Cumberbatch comes across as a villain because he does look like a dastardly motherfucker. So. No, two two films that we're, I'm excited to see, and it seems like you are too. So I think we've uh, pretty much hit the, hit the end of the show. So you ready to wrap this puppy up? Yep, yep, yep. I'm I'm genuinely happy that I actually lasted some of the show, <laughs> so, the majority yeah. of the show. I, it was, and you were able to get back on. That was what was impressive. So I mean, even Thank though we uh, we crashed and burned a couple times, I think that we recovered fairly well. Exactly. We're like we are the Matt Brown of MMA podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're, yeah, you can't you can't put a thing <laughs> that of the Phoenix, but whichever. 
Right, cool. Um, many thanks to Fight Times Radio. Many thanks to Erica for putting up with my internet bullshit. Many thanks to Matt for also putting up with my internet bullshit. And uh, my thoughts go out to all those in Boston who have suffered. Um, and I believe everyone on Across the Pond and May has the exact same feeling in that regard. Uh, Matt, anyone you'd like to thank? Well, I think you pretty much hit it right there, man. I, I'd absolutely thoughts and prayers went out to everybody in Boston. It was a horrific, uh, horrific thing to have to sit through and watch. Um, but, uh, yeah, and thanks to Surfer Ken for coming on the show. And as always, thank you guys, you and Erica, uh, for uh, for being on the show. It's just really enjoy it, man. So when the, so the weeks that we miss it, 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 it kills me. I, I miss miss doing the show. So I'm glad we got it, got it in and, and, uh, and with a little bit of technical difficulty, but we got through it. Well, we'll be we'll be back uh, next week, Sunday. Yes, because even though I will be uh, traveling and it will be a, a squeeze, uh, I will be back next Sunday. Matt will hopefully be back next Sunday. Erica will hopefully be back next Sunday, and hopefully across the pond, MMA will also be back next Sunday. So, um, Erica, play that funky music. That isn't actually quite that funky, so I can go get the hell out of here and have some food. Peace. <laughs> 